Well, a very good evening to you all. And uh, a disastrous evening it is, because it's, it's been one of those days where absolutely everything's gone wrong. <laughs> it seems to be a weekly Techno Live occurrence that this happens. I mean, kind of, but this this <laughs> week, oh my word, it's, it's worse than worse. <laughs> but that's okay. It's mostly, we'll blame the weather this time. We'll blame the weather, even though it... Did you see the weather yesterday? The weather here yesterday was actually okay. I know, it was almost like summer in November. Yeah, it was ridiculous. It was, but today has been similar, but a bit more grim for us up here, whereas for you, Jack, I believe it's been terrible. Yeah, and I think that might be why my internet is dying, because at the moment it's only running at 3,000 kilobits per second. Oh, so yeah, to uh, to everyone watching, uh, you'll be seeing blocks and horrible, nasty, bad internet things, but there's nothing I can do about that. That's just how th today's going to happen. <laughs> yes, well, that's okay. <laughs> uh, speaking of what's happening, uh, a bit of a different one today, actually. Yeah, yeah, we are doing something different today. Yeah, so we had something planned and changed it last minute because... Well, it, it just wasn't working because, again, everything's going wrong today. <laughs> uh, so I thought I'd show off instead uh, something I've been working on for myself. So do you remember, Dan, uh, January last year, mm. we did a special tech knife all about Burns Night. Yes, we did. Yeah, Was we had January a Burns last... Night. Oh, no. Oh, no? Oh, that's a very long time ago. Oh, <laughs> Oh yeah, it feels like the whole year has gone past massively fast. Very fast, yeah. yeah. But we we did a whole Burns Night celebration in Minecraft, and part of the reason why is because I love Burns Night, mm -hmm. it's the Scottish celebration, and of course, what celebration would it be, especially a Scottish one, without bagpipes? Oh well, of course. So yeah, I've been making my own bagpipes. Uh, because the main reason why is if you want a proper set of real bagpipes, that's about seven hundred and fifty quid, which mm. is a lot. <laughs> but it's all right. They they make electronic versions as well. Electronic bagpipes. Yeah, and they're only five hundred quid. So <laughs> oh, only that's okay then. <laughs> so I can't get bagpipes, and I really want some because I really want to learn them. Uh, mm. So I thought I'd make my own. And okay. I thought I'd show you kind of where I got to. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, if you, if you want to follow along for the first part, uh, I thought I'd show you kind of the theory mm. in a piece of software. Well, not a piece of software, a website called Tinkercad. Oh, Tinkercad. I don't think I've used... Oh, oh Tinkercad's I brilliant. I know I've heard of Tinkercad, yeah. and I think I've seen people use Tinkercad, but I don't. I don't think I've ever used Tinkercad myself. You do have to sign in, but uh, you know, ignoring that, the best thing about it is you can do electronics without having any electronics. Ah, so do, does that include stuff to do with Arduinos and? Things? Oh yes, Arduinos, BBC micro bits, all that stuff. That's exciting. Oh. Oh. Is oh. that a knock at the door? No, that's that's a neighbour deciding that I don't know I was talking to her. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Again, a day like that. Anyway. <laughs> oh, I'm seeing I'm seeing things like micro bits and batteries and Yeah. And I was gonna zoom in, but it's decided that's not gonna work. Oh, it's it's okay. It's quite well, if you do full screen on YouTube, it's quite clear actually what each thing is. <laughs> oh, that's good. Uh, I can zoom in when I start getting them out. But yeah, uh, the cool thing about uh, Tinkercad is you can start programming stuff, and with the components you can do um, all sorts with you know different chips like the five 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 chip mm -hmm. uh, that is like a clock basically it just ticks every now and then and you decide how long each tick is you know you could do proper electronics as in you choose a chip you do a thing with it and yeah uh but you can also do um 
the really what's kind of a more popular type of electronics now where you're using a microcontroller board mm. so a microcontroller board is uh basically a tiny computer but tiny the thing computer. about it is oh, it's got it little... was a potato that i saw go past <laughs> I thought, you know, that looks so much like a potato. And I thought, no. it is a potato. So if you really wanted to, you could power your instrument with a potato, which is massive for some reason. Interesting. Given that, you know, all we do is mock potatoes for their inherent ability to be useless. Um, <laughs> did you see? I was watching a popular. BBC show the other day other broadcasting corporations are available uh, that so they someone has recently this is just a complete random side note by the way uh, someone has recently grown the world's largest potato um, and they gave it um, a name called old, uh, I think they called it Doug and um, they dressed it up in a hat and used to take it for walks Huh. Well, it must have been a very slow news day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, random side note about a potato. Yeah. I can't, I can't seem to power this LED, but maybe that's just my understanding, not uh, the thing. Anyway, yeah, so <laughs> we could power it with a potato, but we're not going to. Yes. Um, yeah, we're going to make a musical instrument with an Arduino. Now, Arduinos are something that I have never looked at because it is not actually a part of my university course. It is for computer science, but because I'm not on a computer science course, well, I am, but I'm not on specifically computer science, I don't get to do Arduinos. Ah. So this is going to be new for me too. Well... I've got a little bit of experience because my, my first job I ever had um, was working a lot with Arduinos and I didn't know anything about electronics then so it really helped me learn. Mm. And yeah, they are just a little computer with little plugs that you could put certain things in. So the 5 volt or the 5V plug gives you power. Um, the one's called analog. They take uh, things like joysticks the digital ones, that's where you plug things that go on and off. All that kind of stuff. And we can actually hmm. get it, and I might be a little bit rusty about this, because we'll see. <laughs> uh, you can actually get them to make music. And uh, one of the nice things to do about it is to have set up a button, so that when you push a button, it makes a sound. It looks to me like a much more complicated micro bit. Yeah, it is. It's like a micro bit, but you can use it with typed code instead of uh, ah. blocks. Mm. Anyway, I've just gotten out here uh, piezo or piezo. I never know how to pronounce it. But all that is is basically a tiny, really harsh sounding speaker. Okay. Um, and yeah, it's, it's all like your most basic speaker. Mm. And I'm going to wire this up to the Arduino so that we can tell it to make a noise. Uh, but first, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a resistor in the way because a resistor turns a little bit of electricity to heat. So it means not enough electricity gets to the speaker, so it makes the speaker quieter. Ah, okay. Because you don't want it blowing your eardrums. No, and it does hurt if it's loud. <laughs> So yeah, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go from... I've decided to use pin 9 because it's kind of a traditional one for some okay. reason. So it's got a little no... squiggly line next to it as well. That's quite important. So there's no specific pins per se. It's more of a convention Yeah. you choose which pin. So the, the ones on the right are the digital pins. So you only use them for things that go on and off. Right. And the ones on the left down labelled analogue you go for things that have more values than just on or off ah okay so um, a good example of it is a joystick uh, mm. on you know your game controllers uh -huh. because a joystick if you move it a little bit the character walks if you move it a little bit more the character walks faster and if you push it all the way the character runs 
Yeah. So that has three stages. That needs a lot more than just on or off. Because if you had a button to walk, it'd be you press a button and the player runs. It's very yeah. different. Anyway. Yeah, so I've just wired up the positive, and I can tell it's positive because I'm just hovering over and it's telling me it's positive. I've just uh, wired up the positive leg of the speaker. But with electricity, everything needs to be a circuit. So I need to somehow hook up the negative end. And the negative typically goes to the la the one labeled GND or ground. Yeah. So I'm going to pop this along, pop it in ground. And there we are. I've wired up a speaker. And it's not enough to just leave that. I can, I can, I have to program that as well. Mm -hmm. And I, I could program it so you push a button and it makes the speaker go. But let's just test it out. So I'm going to go to code. And yeah, you do have drag and drop options, but I don't want any of these. Just going to delete them. And instead, so I'm just going to put it. What language are we uh, using? Sorry. What language are we using? Oh, I'm not sure what language this is because it, it's Tinkercad's own language. Ah, okay. It looks a lot like MakeCode or a lot like Scratch. Mm. But it's very much its own thing. So, for example, you don't need to put this in a block. You can just leave it there and it works. <laughs> I, I see. So we're not using... Ah, so, we're u so we are sticking with the blocks. Yeah. But is there a... Um... Does does Arduino use a specific language so oh, yeah. it's all using text based programming? So the text based one is C or in this case C plus plus. Ah, okay. So C or C plus plus. Yeah, and it's very very nitty gritty raw programming. Oh there. yes. It's <laughs> um we call it close to the metal. Mm. Because it it's easier for a computer to understand than a human. I'm just going to go for blocks for this one, mm -hmm. just for now. I'll show you what I've got going on on yes. um, uh, text in a bit. But yeah, I'm just going to pop in this simple play speaker on pin with tone 60 for one second. But again, I've put it in pin 9, so I'm going to change that to pin 9. And if anyone out there is listening and hates horrible screechy noises... Now's the time to turn your volume down. And by the way, I'm not talking about my voice. I'm talking about what's going to happen when I click play. <laughs> I'm going to try and listen to it on YouTube over our voices. Oh, good luck. Uh, it's not here fun. We go. Three, two, one. Okay, I'm going to stop that. It was a lot louder than I was expecting it to be. <laughs> Hang on, it's still coming through. No, I just, I literally saw the volume meter go all oh. the way up to the top. So sorry I've deafened everyone. <laughs> oh, it's very quiet on YouTube. Oh, that's a relief. That's all I can say. Horrible sound. But yeah, that's, uh, that's what we're doing. All we're, we're doing a nice simple thing where we're giving power to the speaker. We get, we can actually have a look at the power, and you know how it looks like, how it's being sent. If I get in components, I find a where is it oscilloscope. Uh, so this one's going to be negative. This one's going to be positive. Oh, I've done this all horribly unneat <laughs> but I just wanted to show off something cool because with the oscilloscope we can sort of see how the power's being sent uh -huh. actually what I'm going to do I'm going to turn that um, turn that resistor a lot higher so it makes it a lot quieter ah good idea there we are I can't hear that at all it's still working it's just, we don't need to hear that sound again. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so 
this oscilloscope is showing us how the power has been sent is being sent on off on off on off on off on off on off and really fast mm. and that's how it's making the sound which i just find really cool <laughs> yeah it is interesting how it actually does generate the sound you know yeah because we don't really think about that do we we just kind of we just kind of oh it's making a noise but we don't actually think how that noise is physically produced well what's happening is a speaker is basically a magnet and when you give it electricity the magnet pushes out and when you take away electricity the magnet goes in mm. and because you're moving that magnet back and forth and that magnet's attached to a big bit of paper what that's doing is it's pushing the air and what happens when okay. you push the air well it makes a sound yeah, because you're creating vibrations. Mm. So you push the air, and then you pull the air, and you push, pull, push, pull. And then the air, of course, is the air. So the <laughs> wave of sound travels through it. When that comes to your ear, it pushes and pulls on your eardrum. And that's how, you're he that's how you hear. Yeah. And so oh. what we're doing by pushing... With the with with the electronics, with the Arduino, we switch on the power, so we push the magnet, and then we turn off the power, so we pull the magnet, and we're getting that vibration happening. Mm. Anyway, I'm gonna add a button, a push button, and this is where I always get things wrong because I can never remember how to wire up a button properly. Okay. Uh, so this is going to be worrying. <laughs> Because there's four legs on a button. Right. And hang on, I've got a circuit board in the back here. I'm going to copy off that. I'm going to cheat off something I did a couple of years ago. <laughs> Rather than have to learn it again. Plagiarise your own work, Jack. <laughs> okay, uh, I can't hear you at all, so... I can make that work. Uh, right. Yeah, so, yeah, I've got an old circuit board. This is years ago when I made my own PlayStation controller. Oh, okay. Um, it was really difficult to play because, of course, it was a circuit board. It was it didn't have any nice buttons. Mm. Uh, okay. So that's wired to positive. Yeah. So... What I think is the first thing is we need to wire up one of these legs to positive. Okay. So it's going to get power from the Arduino. And I think it's this leg in the top right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wire it up to the pin that says 5 volts. So I'm giving it 5 volts of power. And that's what that pin does. It's its only purpose. Okay. Yeah, just checking that's correct. Yeah, that's correct. <laughs> and yeah, I've also changed the wire as well. Uh, because typically the positive wire is always colored red. Right, okay. Makes sense to have different colors. Mm. Then... Uh, this wire, this one of the of the button, I think that goes to negative, but I think it has to go via a resistor, just like the speaker. I don't know. It's been so long. <laughs> I mean, we can try it and see what the results yeah. are. If it doesn't work, I I can do uh, a Blue Peter and say, here's one I made earlier. Exactly. Okay, wire this one up. And this one's going to go to ground, a voice known as negative. And that wire is usually black. And yeah, I think the last one is just whichever one of these. And I think that just goes, that goes to one of the digital pins on the Arduino. 
Because what the Arduino is going to do is, have I found... Is the button pressed? Is the button pressed? Is the button pressed? And it's to go constantly check. Mm -hmm. So, let's do that one to pin to. Why not? And let's make that... Do you want to suggest a colour? I mean, green's my favourite, and that's already been used. So <laughs> let's go with... Um... Oh, let's go blue. Blue's a nice one. Yeah. All right. And of course, that's that's never just the end of the story with Arduino. Of course, you have to do the code as well. Mm. <laughs> so code. And this is the bit I'm worried about. Um... Yeah. Okay. I think I got it. So what we do is we basically say if you can read the pin and there's some electricity going through the pin, then that must mean that the button's pressed. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to grab an if. And I'm going to be reading a digital pin. So I'm going to need a read digital pin one. And we're looking at pin two because that's where the button's plugged in. pin 2 and then we need to check whether it's equal or not to, to a value trouble is I don't know what value <laughs> <laughs> this is a fundamental problem we'll, we'll try 1 as a value we'll see if read digital pin 2 equals 1 yeah, I think that'll do it. So what should happen is it won't play the speaker unless the button's pressed. Okay. And we should be able to tell because the oscilloscope will light up. Let, let's let see. Without hearing the horrible sound. Yeah. Okay, so, oh, yeah, the oscilloscope has nothing on it. Let's push the button. And, yeah, it's making a sound when you push the button. And Excellent. when I stop pressing the button... It makes no sound. This is good. Yeah. I'm pleased. <laughs> Excellent. So yeah, that's um, a nice, cool way of making an instrument. But trouble is, the Arduino can only do a certain type of sound. Mm. It can only make um, square waves. And we, we call yeah. them square waves because that's what they look, what they like, look like, like on the oscilloscope. They're square. Mm. And trouble is, square waves always sound like old video games. They always sound like they've been made by a computer rather than made by a real instrument. Yes. Uh, so, what we can do is we can get rid of the speaker and instead we can get the Arduino to send all the buttons to another computer and that computer is the one that deals with the music. Right. Makes now, sense. Out of curiosity, Dan. Yes. Have you ever played an instrument? Started learning the guitar years ago. Um, didn't proceed. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I had a um Oh, many years ago. I I started learning piano. Oh, okay. I like the piano. Yeah. It's quite nice as an instrument goes. Mhm. Mm um And yeah. Well, basically what we're going to be doing is well what I've done with my bagpipes is I've turned the Arduino into a keyboard. Okay. But not a proper keyboard. Oh, put it this way. Let me introduce you to my desk. Hello, world. <laughs> <laughs> An actual live... And I know. And you can look at my weird hand. <laughs> Jack's hand. It's not usually that blue. Uh, okay, put it this way. 
I plugged in my really fancy camera. Well, I say really fancy. I plugged in my nice camera so I could do a nice demonstration. Um, but my nice camera decided to fog up. As in, there was water in the lens. So yeah, it just looked. Not... Yeah. Oh, the, the it's faded away now, but it's all it's still really not nice. Will it be uh, fixable? Well, I'm gonna put in a box of rice overnight. Good idea. And yeah. Hopefully, I'll fix it. But what I've done is, hang on, give me a second. Oh, I can kind Ow. of see. So and I can sort. Of... I could sort of see the condensation on the lens there. Oh dear. I uh, don't know how that's happened. So anyway, this is my piano. <laughs> it's a bit... Sounds fine. Yeah, and it's not a normal piano. Because a normal piano, you press a key and it makes a noise. Mm -hmm. But this one, you plug in to the computer and the computer decides which noise it plays. Okay. And the reason why is it's a MIDI keyboard. Right. Uh, I'm trying to put it away without destroying everything in my room. And, yeah, MIDI was designed in the 80s. What it does is whatever instrument you have sends notes to a computer to interpret. Right. So, uh, if I... I'm just going to go ahead and show you one I made earlier. Okay. So welcome to my bagpipes. Sounding by for bagpipes. So yeah, um, it's like a keyboard in that it has a row of buttons. But each button, instead of playing a sound on a speaker, goes to the uh, Arduino... And then the Arduino sends MIDI information to oh, the computer. Okay. Oh, okay. So if Makes I sense. plug this in, and we'll hope it works. Uh, it'd help if I plugged it in the right way around. Okay, it's just booting up. And have I got the right sound font loaded? Yeah, so by pressing the right buttons, I should have... And that's not coming through on the stream. <laughs> um, why is that not coming through on the stream? Hang on. It, it's not. It's it's not sending... Oh, I didn't... Playing nice piano sounds. Oh, crumbs. Don't know why. <laughs> I guess the software I'm using just doesn't want to be streamed. But if I head over to here, buttons, 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 here's a different piece of software that shows you all the messages that are being sent via MIDI. So I'm going to press a button now, and it might be a bit hard to see, but it says, note, G3 is being played. Oh. And if I let go of that note... Note G3 now has a velocity, which means how loud it is, of zero. Mm. So G3, A3, B3, C3. I mean, this would be so much more impressive if it are actually playing the notes, but... <laughs> Trouble is, it's playing them in my ear. It's not playing them in yours. Oh, not in ours. Oh. Yeah, it's annoying. Yeah. <sighs> oh, well. <laughs> But yeah, I thought I'd show you how I made that. Yes. Because you can never have enough bagpipes. That's one thing I've learnt. <laughs> I quite like um, songs that contain the violin. Oh, well, that's interesting because violins are notoriously hard to do on computers. Mm. They always sound a bit horrid. We Do you remember when we made... Oh... What did we make? Was it using Python? We we got that um, 
bad Lady Gaga. Oh, the bad version of Lady Gaga. Oh, playing. that was the AI special. The AI special and the bad it wasn't the bad lady. It was a bad version of Lady Gaga and a bad version of Harry Potter. I think wasn't it that we got? Oh, I need to find that again. Oh, I'll tell you what. I'll try and find them out and I'll send them to you. <laughs> Amazing. Anyway, welcome to the 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 dirty ice cream tub of weird stuff. <laughs> but this is where I have all my electronics, basically. So there goes the ice cream tub. Okay, uh, I'm going to turn that over. It's not an advert for that ice cream. It's just just gen generic ice cream. That is generic, I believe. Uh, specifically, Aldi other brands are available, but other brands are available. Ooh, ice cream. close. Lives Lidl's. Lidl. Ah, oh, so close. <laughs> but yeah, this is my little ice cream tub of goodies. I got an old. This is from when I repaired a old um, PlayStation controller. Mm. And you can see that the joysticks that are actually. It'd help if I actually put that up close to the camera. That's what's inside a controller. Oh, yeah, there they are. Pretty cool. Um, I've got resistors. I've got That's buttons. That's a PlayStation 2 controller. I think it might be, actually. Oh, actually, I think it might be a cheap knockoff. Ah. Um, I've got LEDs. That's all cool. But, yeah, what I'm just going to do is wire up uh, some buttons to kind of make a start on making an instrument. And, of course, this is the really fiddly bit, because the buttons in real life are absolutely tiny. Mm. So, uh, the thing with breadboard, which is what this is called, is uh, the electricity travels along certain paths on it. Mm. And you have to remember which bits go horizontal and which bits go vertical. I see. So, yeah, just popping in some buttons. This is very... It hurts the fingers. It's always very therapeutic. It's always a nice, relaxing thing to do. Oh, well, look at that. It's basically... Electronics is a lot like kind of Lego, but with sparks. Yeah. And yeah. Basic electronics are all right, but when you start getting more advanced stuff, you have to make sure to be a bit careful. Mm. So I was half tempted to show everyone some soldering today, but I have lost my safety glasses ah. for soldering, and I'd much rather do that with those on. So well, that might yeah. be coming in a later stream. You don't necessarily want to, you know, lose an eye or... Oh it's no, much no, no, no. Preferred. You know, I, I typically prefer you know sight. Yeah. And uh yeah, these will need to be wired up with Well that's the thing. We need to somehow get power from the board from the Arduino over to the breadboard. Mm. So we use jumper wires for that. Although not this one, it's got a blob of horrible solder on it. Uh, now, which wire do you think I should choose? <laughs> There's a lot uh, of them. Um, I don't think I've got any red ones left. Oh no, are they all one. of fairly good standard? Mm, cheap, I think the word is. Okay. Uh, so yeah, I've <laughs> got a red one, oh, and oh, I've lost just the seen the. I've just seen the jumble of cables. Yeah. I'm just going to put that into pin 5, like we did on Tinkercad. Um, although this one, I probably need that a little bit longer, so I'm going to extend that with another cable. Yeah. And I'm going to have that going straight into the board. There. And then I'll need negative. Uh, so, do I have a black wire? Yep. And I'm putting that in ground. And again... Oh, that's probably close enough to... Yeah, I don't need the extension. I could just go straight there, can't I? Is there a specific 
pin within ground on the breadboard that it should be going into? Because there are lots of different holes there. Yeah, so there's three holes with ground um, oh, on the breadboard. Yeah. So typically, the the ones with a line next to them are where mm. different things should go. So this one has a black line next to it, so that's going to be treated as the negative line. Right, okay. And because I've put the ground, the negative, into the top here, it means it's going along the whole of that line. Right, okay. And the same with the positive. Okay. The buttons I'm going to go having that way. And speaking of the buttons, I think it's time to wire those up. So, I've got a lovely... I don't know what I like... I don't know why, but I really like this box. <laughs> it's just got a lovely load of wires in it, and they've all got nice colours. <laughs> and this is kind of the bit I enjoy the most about electronics. Just finding these wires and plugging them in. Oh, the box that they're arranged so neatly. I know, it's like sweets, isn't it? It is. Do, these are not sweets. Do not eat the sweets. <laughs> no, do not eat the non-sweets. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to be... Yeah, I'll do... Now, this is the fiddly bit, and I wish I had some tweezers to make this easier, but I don't. I'm just plugging the buttons in, one by one. Uh, that's probably going to be a brown. Um, hmm, just thinking. Yeah, that's all right. It has been a while, so I do need to keep double checking wherever I'm thinking with the right brains. <laughs> <laughs> No, uh, I need a longer one. Red is too long. What's that? That's orange. That's far too long. Whilst you're working on that, Jack, I've just been reflecting of nostalgia, thinking about your fancy camera. Well, the, the, the fancy camera that isn't actually the fancy camera, which is allowing us to view your desk right now. Um, I was thinking back, and I'm sure you will have fond memories of this, Jack, and I'm sure some children today probably still do, actually, um, to the primary school um, projectors that they used to display song lyrics in assembly. Oh, the overhead projectors! The, well, I is it the the one that I'm thinking of got wheeled out and it had a light bulb in it and they put a plastic uh, the acetate yeah and it had the lyrics of the song printed on it and it would then project it onto basically a, a pull up the sort of white well dare I call it whiteboard it was basically a, a sheet that they pulled out and then effectively you could project the song lyrics directly onto it yeah, I remember um, that so well. And normally the laminate sheets with the song lyrics would have a teacher's coffee stain mug <laughs> on it or something of, of similar nature. Um, and it would always be a case sometimes of wonkily printed or the projecto thing wasn't working properly, the light bulb had blown, something like that. And I'm thinking, look how far we've come, you know? Yeah, no, I, I remember that very vividly. I used to be an old art programme on CBBC. Mm. And, uh, it's called Smart, actually. Was it Smart? Oh, I think, yeah, that rings a bell. Or was it CITV? I can't remember which one it was. There was... There was Smart... I'm sure Smart was a... Was a hang on, I, 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 will, I will give it a quick Google. Anyway, uh... just uh, an update on this. I've wired in the buttons... And now I'm wiring in the resistors like we did on um, Tinkercad. It was called Smart. It ran until 2009. But Jack, can you guess what year it started? Oh no, this is going to make me feel old, isn't it? 2000? <laughs> I'm afraid it's worse. Oh no. <laughs> uh, 98. I'm afraid it's worse. 80? Uh, it's 1994. 
Oh, good grief. Oh, that's before my time. <laughs> I don't feel uh, too so, old then. I do remember this show, though. Um, smart. And, yeah, it was on CBBC, started in 1994, ended in 2009. Well, I remember at one point they got three overhead projectors. Mm. And they... Um, put loads of glass on it and made a, a, a on the wall they made a sort of image of the sea out of oh. these projectors that is pretty that is pretty cool actually you know a lot of places are shifting more towards projected images not to mention um as one example disney i'm not sure of the specifics per se <laughs> But I know that a lot of on a lot of their attractions now, they are using on their animatronics um, projected faces as opposed to um, uh, just you know, I guess uh, oh. physically produced eyes and and ears and well, I guess ears, but eyes and mouths and things. You know, they're now actually using projections. I suppose eyes that makes and sense. Mouths, because it, it's a much more realistic in in a way, isn't it? You know, because yeah. all they're doing is essentially animating. Otherwise, you know, if you had an animatronic with a mouth movement that was just up and down, you can't really replicate how the human mouth actually moves, whereas you can now with projections. So it's a good move, um, although it, it does really enhance the realism of some of their animatronics, which, of course, is interesting. Um but no, it, it's it's a clever move, I think, by Disney because it it does really enhance the quality. I think in the immersion. Hmm. Other media conglomerates are available. Are available. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. But yeah, no. Um, that's very interesting because, of course, doing everything with motors, which is another mm. big thing you can do with. Uh, electronics um, like this mm. and with arduino as well right yeah in fact let me get my box of motors a box o motors because yeah um arduinos they can do a lot and you can plug in lots of different things with them so here's a stepper motor this one's a very special one. You kind of find this in 3D printers. Mm -hmm. There's your more normal type of motor. Oh, and I've just dropped it on the floor. <laughs> uh, oh, okay. I'm, I'm just seeing the step motor now. Yeah. These are always really cool to program with. Uh, seven segment displays. And they're called seven segment because... The segments are the bits of the number rather than how many numbers. Ah. And, um, okay, so yeah, here's the speaker I was talking about, the piezo. This is slightly mm. larger than a piezo speaker, as you can see. But this is a really big magnet on the back, and I can prove it because I've picked up all these resistors with it. Ooh, sorry, just, just, just a note... Um, what was the seven one called, did you say, Jack? Oh, the seven-segment display. The seven-segment display. Many a Back to the Future vibe from that. Oh, yeah. From the, from the Dolores... The um, Flux Capacitor. Dolores? Dolores? That's a character from Harry Potter. Uh, the <laughs> DeLorean. Um, uh, Flux Capacitor and things, yeah. Hang on. Um, I thought I had some stepper motors in there as well, but I seem to... You know, some other... Stepper motors, but I seem to have hmm. lost them. That's all right. Anyway, by the way, this is the most ugly circuit I've ever made. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought uh, I could spend time on this, or, you know, I could not. <laughs> well, well, there's no time for neatness in techno life. I know. I mean, we only get an hour. I could talk for about exactly. seven. <laughs> but I think, uh, I think by then YouTube would be coming along and say... Mm, yeah, no, you should probably leave. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, just plug these in. Yeah, this is an absolute disaster of a circuit. 
But in my defense, all my nice stuff is going on to the actual finished product I've got. Well, exactly. So. So this is just all the spares. Precisely. And then a last one for four. And then that's mixing colors, but oh well. Oh no, it's all plugged in. Nice. And there we are. Uh, and it's not just enough to leave it like that. We need to actually program the Arduino. Mm. As we did with um, Tinkercad. But what I'm going to do is a little bit more advanced. And it, it might be a bit daunting, but... All program is until you go, oh. Exactly. exactly okay. <laughs> now, how daunting is this to you, Dan? <laughs> oh, hang on. Stand by. I will see once the stream catches up and I will go, probably yes. Yeah, it, it, it's... This took me some time and I didn't quite understand it at first. Um... Oh. But this this bit at the top is a nice simple bit of code, kind of. It's just a fu it's just a funky structure. But basically, all this code is is me telling, describing to uh, the Arduino what on earth a button is. So a button has a pin that it's plugged into. We have what it's uh, whether it not it's been pressed and whether or not it's pressed in the past. Mm. And we also have a note, and the note represents um what it, it's a it's a number that represents which key on the keyboard it should be mm. and then underneath that i just describe all the buttons so okay um this is for bagpipes so a bagpipe only has eight notes on it there's low G, right. low A, B, C, D, E, F, high G, and high A. And that's what I need to create here. I need to create high A. Okay. So, yeah, I'm making a button called high A. It's going to be on pin 10. And I need to work out which number of the keyboard it should be. Okay. So I've got a website that's telling me. Uh, and it's, this website looks like it came out of the time that MIDI was invented. <laughs> it looks like a really old website. <laughs> but yeah, I need to look for the note, which is A. And it's A4, which is high A. Low A is Ooh, A3. I have just seen the website. <laughs> the background. Oh, and the Ooh, text. Yes. It's using what's that default HTML text. <laughs> Uh, font, sorry. Yeah. Mm. This has a no formatting whatsoever. Other than centre, possibly. Yeah. That being said, it's an incredibly useful website. They're sometimes the most ugly of websites are. Yeah. But what I'm looking for is A in this row here, which is number 81. So that's the number I need to be sending from the Arduino to the computer that's going to be playing the bagpipes noise. Uh-huh. And the trouble is, uh, I can't just give it the number 81 because it doesn't know what that is. Because a lot of computers don't use the same numbers as we do. <laughs> right. Yeah, helpful. So you, we use... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. I'm not going to list them all here, because that might take a while. Well, I, you would be going forever. Yeah, pretty much. Um, But, if, okay, if, you, if I were to ask you how do computers count, what would you say the typical answer is? How do computers count? Yeah. Um... It begins with B. Is it binary? Yep. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, zeros and ones, and uh, computers do count like that. But there's a, another sort of type of maths that computers count in, which is hexadecimal. Oh, hexadecimal. Yeah, which is weird. It's like normal numbers, except they include letters in there. <laughs> yeah. So 
with the other notes, I've got 43, 45, 47, 48, 4A, 4C, 4D, 4F. Mm. And they all start with 0X as well, which is uh, a little extra bit of code that just tells Arduino that we're talking about hexadecimal now. Right, okay. <laughs> So that's all the zero X represents is we're telling Arduino. Yeah, we're, we're talking doing about hexadecimals. Yeah. So I need to find out what eighty one is in hexadecimal. No, eighty one decimal in hexadecimal. Because ah, oh, anyway, eighty one in hex. So we know we know our number is eighty one. We just need to know what the hexadecimal equivalent of that is. Yeah, which according to this is fifty one. Well, oh, go. sorry, 5-1. But in binary, that's 1010001. In base 4, which is like a step up from binary, it's 1101. <laughs> mm. And so on. Yeah, it's it's cool. If you like kind of maths like that. And yeah, if I send this to the Arduino, which hopefully I've got that set up correctly... Yep. Uh, the rest of the code is just telling MIDI how to send things. So let's upload and hope this works and doesn't crash. Has it crashed? No? Yes? Okay, done uploading. It should have worked. <laughs> okay. Let's see. Um... Okay, there's no way of testing that here. Oh, yeah, we can test it with the input monitor, can't we? Oh, Dan. Oh, dear. What's <laughs> I the don't problem? think it's working. <laughs> it's not working. No. <laughs> It's finished uploading. Hang on, let me unplug it and plug it back in again. If in doubt, unplug it, plug it back in again. <laughs> yes. Okay, plugging in, plugging in. Arduino has loaded. Arduino Leonardo. Well, it's not working. Um, <laughs> okay. Have I missed a semicolon somewhere? Nope. Tell you what, uh, let's let's switch back to the uh, to the original version, the the one that the one I made earlier. <laughs> yes. And I'll show you how it actually hooks up to the bagpipes. Which, yeah. Let's just have a look. But yeah, we kind of kind. Oh, okay. Everything has, has died. Oh, that's weird. When I unplugged the Arduino, it somehow short-circuited oh. my Mac. Because, yeah, my, my keyboard, the thing that's glowing in the corner, that turned off. My mouse stopped work. Did I mention that this was a disaster stream? <laughs> Oh yeah, I've just seen on the stream, as soon as you unplugged the Arduino, the keyboard died. Weird. Anyway. <laughs> Maybe I was using the wrong... Oh, who knows at this point. Let's see if I can get this working. And if not, it'll just be another couple of weeks' work. <laughs> But yeah, this is the original version, and it's the same Arduino. It's just I know this one's wired up correctly. Uh -huh. oh, it gets so fiddly sometimes. <laughs> but then again, sometimes the joy of it is doing the small. Yes. Bits. There we are. Last button. OK, 
Okay, that's all wired up. Uh, I don't need to flash new code onto it because I think that's all working. What I can do now, though, is get the computer that will be making up my bagpipes. If it hasn't run out of battery. <laughs> So yeah, I've got a normal Windows laptop. <laughs> Ignore the fact that it's got, it looks like Windows XP. It's not, it's actually Windows 10. But one thing you can do uh, is you can load up on computers things called VSTs. Okay. And a VST is basically a digital instrument. And I've got one here, and hopefully what should happen, if I plug the Arduino into it, it should turn the Arduino, it should, the Arduino should be able to control the VST. Oh, I've just seen your Windows XP, and that is a flashback. That is basically just like Windows XP, but with something to hide, because it looks like Windows XP, but is in fact Windows 10. So. Yeah, I didn't like the look of Windows 10, so I changed it. Anyway, let's configure MIDI, Le Arduino Leonardo. Okay. Are we ready to see if we can get a musical rendition? <laughs> I need to hold this up out. to the microphone because my setup is terrible. So if you don't like the sound of bagpipes, now's the time to look away or turn <laughs> away, whatever. <laughs> You ready? Uh huh. I hope this works. Uh. It may not. Yo, oh, let's make the volume turn up. Because everyone loves volume on bagpipes. Oh. Dan. I broke my bagpipes. <laughs> are the bagpipes. <laughs> The dead. Arduino doesn't work anymore. What's up with the Arduino? Oh, the Windows disconnect sound. Oh, oh dear. I'll tell you what, I'm, I'm going back onto Mac and I'm re-flashing the Arduino. I wonder if I've bricked it somehow. Tools, board, Arduino, port. Uh, port isn't enabled, that's fine. Arduino comes in. Arduino Leonardo, board Leonardo. Um, let's verify the code first, see if the code is causing the problem. <sighs> this is fun. <laughs> okay, upload. Okay, done uploading. Will that register now? It was working earlier, you saw it. <laughs> I did see it. Oh, why is it why why, why has everything gone wrong today? <laughs> what what's going on? Oh, Did I get the code wrong? I didn't change the code at all. No. I just did it back to what it was. Tell you what, I'm going to get another Arduino Leonardo. <laughs> ah, I'm going to play all sorts of wonderful bagpipes music that everyone loves and doesn't despise. But no, it I'm just... sure that the actual error is probably something really trivial. Well, um, I'm wondering if I have bricked the Arduino. Because sometimes they play up. And what you have what you have to do is you have to reprogram reprogram them with an ISP uh programmer board. Um and I have bricked a couple in the past trying to do silly things on them. <laughs> but this should be fine and it was fine and you saw that it was fine. I just Anyway, I'll get my other... Oh, no, it's right here. I don't even need to leave the table. 
Uh, other I wonder, mean, no. should you... Would it be related to... Wouldn't be related to the short circuiting, surely. I was just thinking about other things that maybe we could, you know, be mindful of. Well, it could have been. Um, and yeah, when they do short circuit, you typically have to reprogram them with that program I showed off. Uh huh. Um. Okay, let's give this a try. Again, plugging everything back in. <sighs> we need a... That's one thing. I do think we need a technical difficulties screen. <laughs> the screen. But the trouble is, it'd be on all the time. Not for... I mean... <laughs> In uh, techno lives, sometimes things do have the tendency of snowballing. <laughs> but I always think we've had most of the time we've had success well you'd hope but then again that's part of computers isn't it well it is oh dear um that's interesting <laughs> so i forgot the last thing that was on this arduino was a piece of code that turned it into a keyboard uh -huh. so now my computer thinks that i'm putting a new keyboard in <laughs> Oh no. I'm not, it's an Arduino, it's not a keyboard. Anyway, let's A new keyboard as in one that you type on? Yeah, yeah. Or I I'd set not it up. A, not 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 an actual keyboard. Well, I was fed up with having to I didn't have a button to skip music. Hmm. So I set up the Arduino so I could press a button, it would pretend to be a keyboard. Yeah. And then it would send um Oh, I've just seen the keyboard set up system. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's see if this works. It says it's done uploading. No, where's the MIDI thing gone again? <sighs> just... Something somewhere has... Um... Something somewhere seems to have just decided that it's going to... Yeah, it's just decided it's not going to be... Quietly uh... just stop functioning. <sighs> I'll tell you what, to play us off. <laughs> <laughs> um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cheat and I'm going to plug in my... My my old piano. <laughs> why why bother making it on when you got another one that works perfectly fine? <laughs> uh, right, where's the computer? <sighs> All this to hear some horrible horrible <laughs> bagpipe Horror sounds. Five five. Oh, and I'll be very annoyed if I've damaged it because I had that working the other day and it was all working nicely. I definitely think something was up with my Arduino, maybe. I don't uh -huh. know. Hard to tell. Anyway. Oh, I know we're over time, but we need to hear the bagpipes at least. We do. Because otherwise, what's the point in even turning up? Ah, oh, and there's the Windows error sound. The Windows error sound just cheekily pinging off in the background. <laughs> okay, does it find the MIDI? It has found the MIDI. Oh, and some lighting up. Oh, that was a sound. No, nope, wrong MIDI. <laughs> wrong MIDI. Correct MIDI. Oh.
Oh. <laughs> oh no. And there we are. By the way, I can't play the bagpipes. <laughs> that was quite something. <laughs> Oh, and there's the Windows disconnect sound. Oh, the, at the Windows end. disconnect sound, just to finish us off. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, if I ever get those working, I'll uh, I'll treat everyone to some lovely bagpipe sounds. Uh, <laughs> I won't. I won't. I, I'll never get this working, and that's probably for the best. If that, I think that was in itself uh, a reason for people to. Ring the notification bell. <laughs> oh, definitely. Uh, <laughs> ring the bell if you want to show you how much you like uh, <laughs> like bagpipes. bagpipes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, that's that's the end of a very long and disastrous day of all I the electronics against us. <laughs> it's been incredible. Uh, anyway, uh, tune in next week for... Um, my apology video to Scotland. And if... <laughs> Jack apologises to Scotland. <laughs> okay. Cheerio, everyone. Thanks. See you next Take week. Take care.